Hey, Crack the Code and AMI community. It's Angela of AngelaMinnelli.com. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about one of my all-time favorite topics. I could talk at length about this until I'm blue in the face. It's enzymes and the importance of enzymes in our bodies and in our lives, especially today due to how depleted the soil is of nutrients, which means we're not getting a lot of nutrients in our body, stress, things that cause enzyme deficiencies and how it's showing up in everyday symptoms. So let me grab my, my mouse over here because I am going to be talking um, off of some PowerPoint slides so that I make sure that I give you all the information that I want to make sure that you get on this topic. So let's start with what are enzymes. So basically they're the, they're the key to life. These are the workers that make your body function. You have hundreds of thousands of enzymes in every living tissue, organ, fluid in your body and each has its own function. So they work on a cellular level. If you didn't have enzymes in your body, you would not be alive listening or watching, listening to or watching this video right now. You just, it's, it's impossible. You have to have enzymes to live, but we have become chronically deficient as a society um, due to things like prescription drug interaction, the amount of stress we're dealing with, eating too fast, um, cooked, irradiated foods, uh, there's different factors as to why we become enzyme deficient. Aging is one of them too. Once you hit the age of 40, um, that is one side effect of aging is that we do um, lose enzyme production. So especially over the age of 40, it becomes even more obvious. Enzymes actually activate our muscles. They stimulate our nerves. They make our hearts beat. They keep us breathing. They help us think. So if you think you can get away without enzymes, you would be wrong. What they are is they're large protein molecules and they're found in all living things. And they're essential to breaking down food into energy and ultimately making your body. So without them, your body can't process proteins, fats, carbohydrates, fibers, sugars. So when you talk digestion, you need two things to digest food. You need enzymes and you need hydrochloric acid or HCL. So the top 10 symptoms of enzyme deficiency that we find that people are going to doctor's offices for, drug stores for, and they might find temporary relief at best, you know, 24 hour type relief, are things like back and shoulder pain, which you wouldn't probably even think is related to an enzyme deficiency. But just to give you an example around that, sometimes people will complain about, you know, shoulder pain. So to find the root cause of that, I might actually go to the bladder because, or excuse me, the gallbladder, because we know that there are a ton of nerve endings that run up through the spine out to your shoulders uh, and they emanate in the gallbladder. Chronic joint pain is another one. Um, and mind you, all of these lead to, if they're not treated, chronic degenerative disease. So this is, that is a diseased state and that is when you need doctors and hospitals. But if it's subclinical, which means it's not diseased, it's pre-diseased, then us as natural health practitioners have a really good opportunity to help you prevent that from happening. Um, okay, back and shoulder pain, chronic joint pain, um, acid reflux, GERD, high blood pressure, Insomnia, that's a big one. A lot of my clients suffer with insomnia. They want their sleep. That is related to other issues going on as well. Uh, things like adrenal exhaustion, hormonal imbalances, things like that. Headaches, obviously digestive issues are going to be a symptom that show up for people with enzyme deficiency. Even arthritis, it's a big one because it's related to inflammation. Um, RA, rheumatoid arthritis, anxiety, depression, you wouldn't think anything related to an emotional imbalances might be related to a digestive imbalance. And for me and for us in the field, it makes total sense because there's a mind body connection as a holistic practitioner. We're looking at the whole person instead of just one part of you. So there is a connection between the two protein deficiency, 
is related to anxiety and carb deficiency related to um, depression. And that goes back to whether or not, even if you're eating them, that goes back to whether or not you're able to digest them. Specific macronutrient deficiencies, again, protein, um, increased body secretions, PMS, muscle cramps, cold hands and feet, and eczema. With carbs, we find decreased body secretions, muscle weakness. These are people who tend to startle easily, uh, which tends to be me sometimes. Inability to concentrate, so it's not just because you are over 40. Um, again, it has to do with the health of your body. Increased sensitivity to light and difficulty swallowing. And with fat deficiency, dry skin, tremors, and an Ill inability to conceive. I actually know some fellow um, enzyme nutrition therapists who have been able to help their clients um, conceive by getting them on the right enzyme protocol. Okie doke, how do we become deficient? I mentioned this. Stress, this shows up in the form of mechanical, emotional, or nutritional. So mechanical is a structural kind of stress, like a pinch nerve, or um, if you, and when I'm working with someone in person, I, I do what's called a total body energy assessment, and I can actually assess their, them um, structurally and help to uh, fix the imbalances structurally. If it's not structural, it's nutritional. So men, MEN, these are the forms of stress we deal with, not just the opposite sex, but mechanical, emotional, and nutritional. Again, eating too fast, which I know a lot of you in the corporate world or busy moms, you tend to eat really, really fast. It's going to inhibit enzyme production. Cooked irradiated foods, which there's nothing wrong with eating that, but you're not getting any enzymes out of it, and you're getting very few nutrients as well. So you want to make sure that you've got some enzymes that are breaking that food down and getting what nutrient density out of it you can. Um, prescription medications interfere with natural enzyme production as well as aging. We've got three kinds of enzymes. Um, food uh, enzymes, which are contained in all raw food. So raw foodies tend to have like those really bright eyes and super clear skin, and it's because they're getting a lot of nutrients from the food that they're eating. Digestive enzymes, which are secreted by the body to digest food, and then metabolic enzymes. So these guys go in and clean up the pathogens and the floaters and the um, bacteria and foreign invaders that are floating around your bloodstream, things like undigested food that leak out through your gut when it's not broken down, um, and they actually work to clean up the immune system. So, so important with everything, not just with cold and flu season coming up, um, but all kinds of diseases, it all goes back to immune. And metabolic enzymes are the key to keeping the immune system healthy. We're gonna talk about um, metabolic syndrome here in a minute as well, and that's related to metabolic enzymes. Um, so what do enzymes do? They improve digestion and they reduce cravings. So if you're a woman, especially, about 95% of women have a hard time digesting protein and fat. And we're not 100% sure why that is. We just know it's a fact. So when that happens, in order to get energy, that means you're craving a lot of sugar to get the energy. Um, okay, they also uh, normalize bowel function. So uh, just got to tell you, if you're someone who goes has a bowel movement less than once a day, or you're someone like some people I talk to who say, oh, I go once a week, that's not good. You need to be going two to three times a day. And enzymes help you do that. They also nourish the body with its primary nutrient needs as in protein, carbs, and lipids or fats. Now, you know that I teach on the topic of emotional eating, which relates to weight loss, weight release. And um, like I just mentioned, poor protein digestion leads to poor fat digestion, which equals excess weight. These guys, even if you're eating the best diet, the best protein out there, high quality, all organic, no antibiotics or hormones, if you're not digesting it, if it's just sitting in your gut or somewhere in your body, because that's what the body will do, it will just put it somewhere. If it doesn't know what to do with it, it becomes toxic. 
And this is why I notice in the beginning when I'm working with clients, usually within a couple of weeks, they tend to lose about four or five pounds, something like that right away with enzyme therapy because we're moving these toxins out of your body. So it's very similar to when you do a detox because enzymes are very detoxifying. If you can't digest fat, you're gonna crave more sugar. So a lot of people I talk to deal with a lot of sugar cravings and it's very frustrating for them but guess what? It's a biological need to keep you going. Your body is saying, okay, well, we're not getting energy from fat or protein because even though you're eating it, we're not breaking it down. We're really stressed out. We've got all these things going on. We're on a lot of medications, whatever it might be. So the body can't function the way it needs to. And it's got to give you, it's got to get you some kind of energy. So it will produce a craving for sugar. And that's exactly what sugar does. Sugar is not the problem. Sugar is the solution. A lot of times it's very fast acting in the body. The body can get um, the, the rush in the blood sugar that it needs to, to keep you from passing out and, you know, getting into a really dangerous state. When you digest sugar though, you're going to crave it less, which equals weight loss. Lipase um, is a fat splitting enzyme that breaks down fat and it moves it and distributes it. Plus it burns fat for energy. Um, it actually breaks down and dissolves fat throughout your body, but without it, fat stagnates and accumulates in all the places we don't want it to, on our hips, our butt, our thighs, our abs, all those things. Um, all right, now let's talk a little bit about uh, metabolic syndrome before I get into some solutions here. Now, this is a condition, I call it the modern day deterrent to, to weight loss. Um, this is a condition that is a worldwide epidemic with poten potentially devastating consequences. And what it is, is a family of related disorders um, discovered in the last 20 years, which lead to, again, chronic degenerative disease. And what do I mean by that? I mean things like diabetes, stroke, cancer, heart disease, you know, the four, top four killers out there, which are really just derivatives of stress. Stress is actually the number one killer. It is recognized as the precursor to full-blown type 2 diabetes. And it's diagnosed when three or more of five disorders are present. Now, what are those? For men, it's a waist, waist circumference greater or equal to 40 inches. The triglyceride count is a 150 or more. The HDL is less than 40. Blood pressures over um, exceeds 130 over 85, and the fasting glucose is over 100. For women, it's not a whole lot different. The waist circumference is over 35 inches. Triglycerides 150. HDL is less than 50. Blood pressure is the same, 130 over 85, and the fasting glucose is the same as well, over 100. Now, who gets it? All ethnicities are sub subject to metabolic syndrome. Um, white men and women are equally at risk as African um, American women and Mexican American women. Whether you're obese or thin, you can have metabolic syndrome, young or old. There's really no discrepancy here. It's, it's pretty much everyone. People who have a sibling or parent who has diabetes, they're at risk. Um, people who have a personal history of diabetes, Women who have a personal history of PCOS, and this is um, also known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. So these are women in reproductive ages, um, but that is a condition that occurs as a result of high testosterone levels. Okay, so how does metabolic syndrome develop? Um, it tends to occur when you have um, abdominal obesity, so again, a large weight waistline, and inactive lifestyle. If you have insulin resistance, now there are some of the conditions that are um, under the category of metabolic syndrome before it gets to disease state are things like hypoglycemia, insulin resistance. These are blood sugar imbalances, and in the Crack the Code course, I cover a lot of these, what they mean, whether they apply to you or not. Go back to the health reality checkup form to determine that. 
Um, but again, metabolic syndrome is really just, it's a combination of, of blood sugar imbalances and hypoglycemia is low blood sugar, which leads to insulin resistance. And then that's when you get into metabolic syndrome. And insulin resistance is basically when your body is unable to process insulin anymore and it just stores it as fat. It doesn't, it can't get the insulin into the cells to use it for energy. So it stores it as fat. And this is, it's in the, in the abdominal area. So that makes sense. Abdominal obesity, metabolic syndrome. One other thing um, is people with low magnesium levels, they tend to have thyroid disorders as well. Um, some people are at risk for metabolic syndrome because they take medicines that cause weight gain or changes in blood pressure, blood cholesterol, and blood sugar levels. So again, back to the blood sugar. Um, these medicines are most often used to treat inflammation, allergies, HIV, and depression, and other types of mental illness. My personal opinion on this is it all goes back to gut health. So much of this can be improved if you work to improve the health of your gut. Type 2 diabetes progression. This is a topic that, um, that I study frequently and for my, for my own benefit as well as those of the, of the people that I serve through my community because it's such a, a growing epidemic and they've even indicated that it's likely to bankrupt the healthcare industry because of how many people are being diagnosed with diabetes. You start with a diet high in refined carbs and low in um, micronutrients, sedentary lifestyle, and there is a, a component of genetics that's related to this as well. Um, insulin levels increase in the bloodstream. This is when we develop insulin resistance, which I just mentioned. Um, blood gl glucose, which is what you, you know your brain needs to function, the liver, all of that. Insulin levels um, are high. Pancreas decreases insulin production because again, now we have a dysfunction. Pancreas isn't really operating or, or functioning the way it needs to be. Um, blood gl glucose remains high. And this is when we get type two diabetes. Um, dangers of metabolic syndrome puts you at a higher risk for developing diabetes, which develops over time, it's not overnight, and is linked to an inability to digest fats as well. That's really what diabetes is. It's, it's, um, it's a fat digestion issue. It, they look to it more as just difficulty digesting sugars or processing sugars. Again, it goes back to the, the, the fact that you're having trouble digesting proteins and fats, more specifically fats. Also gives you an increased risk for heart disease, stroke, and cancer, and obviously early or premature death if prolonged or untreated. So what do you do about all of this? Obviously, lose weight commit to a healthy diet, increase exercise. For me, I think a little bit beyond just the average, you know, um, workout at the gym type of exercise. I really like to go for walks. I like to do yoga. Um, those are the things that really suit my lifestyle. Now, I tend to think that the really intense hardcore workouts can actually add a lot more stress. And that stress chemistry, chemistry you've got going on is going to lead to more weight gain. But not to say that I don't like those workouts either. It's just, I really try and find a balance there. If you're a smoker, stop smoking. I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that. Check your blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar levels regularly. Okay, the importance of digestive efficiency on metabolic syndrome. So let's go back to talking a little bit more about enzymes and digestion as a whole. Digestion is 70 to 80% of your health. Again, it's all in the gut. That means that we have a lot of room for improvement. We do not need to leave this up to doctors, hospitals, surgeries. We are more empowered than we realize we are. And this does not have to be as complicated as mainstream media and the pharmaceutical industry wants you to think it is. Um, many of your symptoms are linked to poor gut health. So going back to a lot of those symptoms I mentioned earlier on, a lot of people don't realize this. An inability to properly digest causes excess weight. We covered that. But supporting your body with the right enzymes to digest food will affect its ability to process macronutrients. And again, those are proteins, carbs, and fats. 
ultimately that's going to help you control, control conditions such as insulin resistance, hypoglycemia, metabolic syndrome, and prevent diabetes. I know that that is not something I ever want to deal with in my lifetime is diabetes. So I'm constantly, constantly looking for what I need to do to prevent it even if uh, sometimes I get off course myself. One other topic I do want to cover here because it is related to metabolic syndrome and everything that we're talking about, in particular fat digestion, is the health of your lymph system and its impact on your weight. So the lymph system basically acts as your body's plumbing system. It's taking you know, all the waste out of your body and it requires regular detoxification. So again, when I'm working with someone in person, I can actually do an assessment, a live assessment on their um, lymph system, you know, which is running through your arms and um, various uh, points on your body, and, and that's what I check. And it can get it can get clogged by too much stress, shallow breathing, which is something that women tend to do more so than men, and poor nutrition. Again, undigested fats, and you have to open this first to get other systems moving. We tend to know if the lymph system is clogged due to any kind of swelling, edema. Again, if you're overweight, if there's fat, particularly with women, this is something that I do check when I'm working with them on weight loss. Um, all organs and tissues are drained by the lymph. So think about that. All of your body's organs and tissues are drained by the lymph. If they're not cleared out, then, um, you know, gotta, gotta clean that up. Um, clogged lymphs is a precursor to cancer. This is one of the ways that we can determine whether or not you're an excellent um, candidate for getting cancer someday is if your lymphs are clogged up. And again, going back to immune system, the majority of the immune system is in the lymph system and this requires enzymes to function. Now, what makes the enzymes that I work with unique? I am a functional digestive health specialist trained through the Loomis Institute of Enzyme Nutrition. Dr. Loomis is actually one of the foremost leading authorities in the world on enzyme therapy, enzyme nutrition, and has taught me personally how to administer pharmaceutical grade enzymes through my practice. And they are based on the pH balancing system, which he developed himself. And this ensures that they work in the proper pH and they deliver the right nutrients. So pH is basically just on a scale of 0 to 14. You want to be close to the middle, maybe around 6.8 as far as alkalinity goes in your body. Um, if you're too acidic or too alkaline, too alkaline can lead to um, disease as well. One of the ways that I determine your protocol um, is through a UA, a urinalysis, which I do with virtual clients. I just send that out to their house, um, have them complete the UA and send it back to the lab. If you want to get blood testing done, we can do that as well, although it's not required um, to determine enzyme deficiency, but some people like that. I do, uh, again, in person, if you meet with me in person, if you want to come in and meet with me from out of state, or if you're a local client, I can do some in-person work with you. We can do a homeostatic digestive challenge test, which basically just tells you and me um, through a series of touch points, a series of palpation points on your body, which organs are really struggling to get nutrition. And then again, we also do the total body energy assessment, which is really fascinating for a lot of clients. That's looking at the structural side of imbalances in your body. And then we also do a signs and symptoms survey, which is basically an, an analysis of seven different body systems. Um, so before I wrap this up, let me just make sure I covered everything here that I wanted to talk to you about, which I think I did. Um, really easy, really simple. If you want to talk to me more about how enzyme nutrition therapy can help you, just contact client support at AngelaManelli.com and we will get back to you with setting up a time to discuss it further. You can also just subscribe to my newsletter at angelaminelli.com. And I regularly send out information on topics such as enzymes and how they affect you and give you some free information that way too. So it has been my absolute pleasure to present this video to you today on enzyme nutrition therapy. I wanna thank you so much for being a part of the Crack the Code group. It's been so much fun these past six weeks. 
having you in the group and interacting with you and teaching on topics like adrenal exhaustion, candida, and of course, enzyme therapy, which is what we're talking about today. Um, and this video will be live on my blog as well for other people so that it can help them too. So again, if you're finding this on YouTube or wherever you're finding it, AngelaMinnelli.com is the resource for you uh, to go to to find out more about enzymes and how they can help you in your health and weight loss journey. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.